What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of my franchise cap series. We just put out episode one a few days ago. That's where we put all the caps on teams, got them their potentials. So all the rosters are hypothetically set. Now we can actually start the franchise series. So this episode here is going to be the first part of the season going into the draft. Um, that's what we are going to be doing. We do have one create a player to put in a team. Um, so we'll do that. We did get one more, so we'll, we'll add him in. And then this episode, you know, we're kind of going to take a look at our roster. We're not going to do too much. Remember, we can only do one trade and we do have a player budget. I don't think I'm going to do that one trade right now. I'll probably wait till the trade deadline. But this first episode is going to be getting us through scouting, getting us through the first half. Um, not going to be a ton. The next episode will be the actual draft itself. Um, so this first one is just going to be going through. Um, yeah, the first half, the first part and getting the draft, getting the scouting going so we can get it set up for the draft. So for, first things first, we do have to do our new creative here, and that is going to be Mr. Squiggles. We will see where Mr. Squiggles will go. Then we will change the prospect list. He will be a Baltimore Oriole. If they already have two, we will not put him there. I don't think Baltimore has two, though. They only have one. So Mr. Squiggles will be a Baltimore Oriole. We'll switch the number here. What will his potential be? Oh, he gets the bottom as an 85. Mr. Squiggles will be an 85. Give me one second, Squiggles, in to the Baltimore Orioles organization. There he is, Mr. Squiggles in center field. Sadly, he is behind Colton Cowser, but he is six years younger. So there's M Mr. Squiggles in to the Orioles. We won't do much with the Caps now. Now we actually get into the actual Mariners franchise. Um, I did start this. This was the most recent roster update that uh, SDS did. It was, I guess, considered the opening day roster. Um, so it's probably the best that we have, most accurate that we have. We have our entire bullpen, which is nice, Brash and Santos. Even though they're hurt in real life currently, we have our top five pitchers, which is crazy. Huge, huge uh, drop off after that. So pitching is going to be a huge thing that we need to draft early on to reset our, our, our farm system because we don't have any pitchers in our farm system just like the Mariners because, well, they're all right here. They've all graduated to the majors. Um, a bullpen, we could always use some help. Closers, we have Munoz. He's going to be decent for a while. We could get another guy or two in there. Um, catchers, we have Raleigh and Garver. Who knows when Garver's going to start to regress, but at least we have Dumper. For a little while, first baseman would be nice. This is where we have our depth, and this is great, especially with these caps. We do have Colt Emerson, B potential. He's only 18 years old, but uh, I'm just kidding. Fister Furbush. Uh, this is one of our caps, which is also huge. Third base, clearly, if you look at the depth chart, is a huge problem for the Mariners. Not any more because of Fister Furbush. Then you look here, and good God. Ryan Bliss, who's probably going to do well for simulating. We have Cole Young, another prospect. Cole Young, Ty Pete, and Felneen are literally all real prospects. I mean, as is Bliss. But these two, Cole Young and Felneen, are so good. Then you add in my cap, who actually somehow made it onto the team that I'm controlling. So our infield is legitimately set for a long time. Um, first base, we could probably have. Colt Emerson can't play first. Neither can Furbush, and I don't think any of these shortstops can either, including myself. No. So uh, first baseman is going to be a really big thing to grab, uh, but everything's going to be the outfield. Yes, we have Rayleigh. Not a huge fan of him, though. So we're going to really focus on pitching and outfield. We have Julio here, but outside of that, we literally don't have anything. We do have Lazaro Montes. 
who's another guy that I physically added because he's a Mariners top 10 pick. So we do have him, um, but I, I, I would just love some more depth. So it, the Mariners are a very good team to play franchise on. They are a very young squad. You add in the cap potential. We were lucky enough to get two of them. I swear that was just random. I, in retrospect, maybe I should have made it so they can't go on to my squad, but hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, maybe going forward, I probably won't allow any more prospects on the Mariners um, because at that point, it, it would probably just be unfair. So um, we'll see. We'll see. But going forward, it's going to be starting pitching. It's going to be first base and probably some corner outfielders are going to be our main situation. But again, remember, we have a player budget. Um, when, you know, when these middle infielders and all this start to want bigger contracts, we're not going to be able to do it. We have 122 million now. Granted, a lot of these guys can probably go, but we're not going to be able to sign all, all of these guys to 20, $25 million contracts. And we can only do one trade a season, which means we may just have to let some of these guys go or offer them a qualifying offer and hope they don't take it so we can get a draft pick that there's going to come times where that's the only option we have. So there's going to be a little strategy here. We can't just go balls to the wall and do everything super easy and trade everyone for prospects and roll the season that way. We are limited as to what we can do, which will be fun. So there's really nothing to do here. We'll go check our contracts first. Actually, we got to get our scouts correct. The way that I like to do scouting is probably way different than other people. You go check out someone like Ant Ortiz. He is probably way, way better at scouting. Um, I just have the ways that I like to do it. And for me, I like to have obviously all three with high efficiency, two of them with high position player efficiency, and one with high uh, pitcher. Um, discoverability is nice because I do like to discover a little bit, but really I like to have two with position player, one with pitcher. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. Um, none of these guys I really want at all. So I, so I need to replace all three of them. And now it's just a matter of who can we replace them with. I always like to start from the bottom-ish and see if there's any gems. Like, um, nope. That's good efficiency, but no pitcher and no position players. It's all very, very important. The efficiency is good. Not high enough with anything else. Um, so I'm not expecting anything to be crazy that low. I say take a peek in case something ever happens. Here's one that I would grab right here. This could be my pitcher. Yes, you can't discover very well, but Gabrielle Sounder, so I guess she um, can be my pitcher because that's pretty freaking solid. Um, I, I, I have 27,000 left, so I, I'm going to be able to get some bangers here. Just need to make sure position players and efficiency is what I'm looking for. There's one right there. Jim Clemente can be our number two. And we still have 16,000 left. So we can really get another efficient position player guy. Higher we go up. Maybe Daryl Schroeder. Uh, Schroeder. That is actually 16,000. I think. Yeah. So that's probably the best that we're going to get for what we're looking for. Don't think we can get Keon Slater. Nope, can't afford him. We're a little too high. That's okay. Daryl Schroeder, Schroeder should be enough for us. And, and this is kind of what I look for. Yes, Discovery is not the greatest. Uh, some people really like to discover a lot. I don't really like to. It's your own personal preference. Again, other people might have their strategy that way. I don't like to do that. I like to have high efficiency, high accuracy when it comes to pitcher and position player. The cool thing about Schroeder is I can use him for both per se, which is nice. The ADA pitcher is good enough. Um, so, it's, so it's very pitcher heavy or I want to go pitcher heavy on a draft. I can use Schroeder for both, which is also nice. Um, so, so we got our scouts. Now I think that we will... Uh, we need to do our roster. I don't like the computer to do it, the AI to do it. I think they make stupid choices sometimes. 
So especially on this cat franchise, I am going to be the one that's going to go through and set um, my major league, my my triple A, my double A, my single A roster. So I will actually sim to the end of spring training, which is here. Uh, JP. Okay, spring training is coming to an end. Now I can set the rosters and set people up and down because it is over. Um, so give me a second. Let me do the rosters. Uh, it, this is not fun to watch. Um, so I'll be back after I set the rosters for our first year of our franchise. All right. I think we are set here. The rosters should be set and done. So we'll take a peek, peek here real quick. I mean, it's nothing that's going to be super crazy. Castillo, Kirby, Gilbert, Miller, and Wu. We're not going to have a long relief. <laughs> Nothing really crazy here. Closers, Munoz, of course. Catchers, Raleigh Garver and Zavala will put up. I mean, it should be Harry Ford as well. We'll probably make that switch very, very quickly. Um, Zavala doesn't have any more op options, but Harry Ford needs to come up and at least be the backup. So we'll make that, that move very, very quickly. Ty France, the only caliber first baseman we have. We'll keep Polanco and Rojas. Haggerty can go down because... One of our caps, we are going to bring up Fister Furbush. He is good enough to be on the bench in the major leagues with Dylan Moore, which, to be honest, Furbush will probably start above Moore. Then we're going to bring up Cumbest, the other one as well. He is a 70. He can back up J.P. Crawford. He also can play second and third, just like Furbush can. So a lot of flexibility we have in the infield. So both of our caps will start on the major league roster. Um, I don't know if they'll start-start. But at least they'll be up on the roster. Left field, we'll bring up Rayleigh and Dominic Enzone. Julio, of course. Everyone else can go sit in the minors. And then Mitchie Hanniger is the only right fielder that we will bring up as well. So pretty, pretty legitimate. Let's sim to the regular season here. And let's just make sure that nothing went crazy. Where am I going? I'm an idiot. Here it is. Good Lord, transactions. Jeez, I'm a dumb dumb. Uh, 327. So yeah, they didn't, this is all the stuff that I did and it doesn't look like they changed anything per se, which is great. It's potential that they might, um, the computer likes to do it. Even though I have everything set to auto, um, there is still a fair chance that they will mess some, some stuff up and move some rosters around. Uh, pitching rotation is already set. The bullpen is already set. They did that automatically, which is nice. The lineup, probably nothing that we won't touch too crazy, although Dylan Moore is not going to be our, our leadoff hitter. Uh, so let me look over these lineups real quick. Let me adjust these lineups. Be right back with you. All right, we have set the lineup. We didn't go too crazy. There's probably some of you that are th thinking why I didn't play certain people. I just want it to be kind of chalk right now. It's kind of like the real Mariners lineup, Crawford, Julio, Polanco, Garver, Dumper, France, Raleigh. Obviously, Hanniger hits higher in the in real baseball, but he's only 69 in the game, so so I will see what happens from there. I do have both of our caps on the bench. In theory, they both could play, but hey, they're rookies. Let's get them a little bit of time just to see what's going on first, but going in for Josh Rojas is very highly possible. Um. I, I probably wouldn't say Polanco quite yet. 77. Um, JP, for some reason, JP's defense is really bad in this game, and that's really surprising to me. Um, he's very good defensively in Major League Baseball. I don't know why he's in the, the high 50s, but hey, it is what it is. So this is what we'll do. We'll do the same for left and right, as you see there. Um, there's not really any huge platoon that we could see um, to put anybody in. I did bring in Luke Rayleigh. Especially against righties, he absolutely mashes right-handers in theory. We'll see if that works out. But that's going to be our our lineup. We have our pitching rotation you already saw. Um, and now we go to scouting. Or, or we will um, skip scouting here because we can't scout uh, until the first week. Remember, we do have that one trade a year that we can do. Most of the time, we will probably hold that for the trading deadline, um, depending on if we're, if we're in or out, um, and expiring contracts, which probably 
how we're going to have to rebuild this team. You look at Julio Castillo. Once he starts dropping off, he might be a problem. $21 million for five years. If he starts dropping, he's probably going to go. Mitch Hanniger at $14 million for a 69 overall dude. Probably not going to cut it. He only has two years left on his deal. So it is what it is. The Julio deal is going to be really, really good for a long time. He's 23. Even 10 years from now, 20 million should be fine. So I like that deal. Um, and there's really no other crazy deals here. We're just going to have to start doing what we can to try and stay within that budget and plan for when these rookies, especially my two caps, need to get paid. I want to keep them. I'm not going to treat them any differently, but I would like to keep them. So we'll see what happens. Um, so what we're going to do is oh, let's skip some days here. He's no longer injured. Yeah, I'm aware. That's why I started him. So we're starting off. So remember, this is a sim franchise, guys. We sim pretty much everything. Um, once we get to the playoffs, if we ever get there, um, we will do things a little bit differently. Um, fix all the lineups. Don't care. And Luis Urias, which I think is AAA, so it doesn't matter. All right, it's no longer injured. All right, so now now we can start scouting. We start out three and six. Like I, I, I'm not super worried about doing really well the first year. Um, I just want to set the team and have a good first scout, a good first draft. So for scouting positional needs, we've kind of already figured it out. We're going to go pitcher and we're going to go corner outfielders. Um, but we could go first baseman too, um, which probably wouldn't be the worst idea to get one outfielder and one first base. So maybe we'll do that. Let's take out left. Let's go first for this first year. Uh, just to help with uh, a player interest, which is nice. So for scouting, this is what I like to do here. Um, I like to discover, although discovery is not super crazy right now. Um, so I'm going to go pitcher international. And then I'm, I'm only going to do the outfield here. I do outfield international a ton and it never gets anybody i don't know if anybody else has that experience but every time that i scout it, it never comes up with anybody so because our discovery is kind of low we're not really going to see a ton i probably don't need to discover with uh, 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 with gabriel sanders maybe is only going to get one player so this is probably a waste to be honest um and so I don't, yeah, I don't think I'm going to scout with, uh, uh, with her. I think I'm just going to go straight into what I was doing. And for pitcher, I like to, um, cancel. I like to scout position. So I'll go starting pitcher international first, and that's where I will start. That's, the, that's how I start. Again, a lot of people might have different ways to do it, but this is how I like to start it. Clearly, our, our draft picks are not going to be that good. I think we're mid-table in the first round, so we're not going to get a banger. Um, as I continue to go through this and people check this out on YouTube, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of tips and tricks on how to scout better. If there's little manipulation type things to scout really well, I probably won't do that. I like to make this as realistic as possible. However... I'm sure people have a lot of great ideas on how to scout in more efficient ways. So I'm sure I will learn as I go and get better. But that is how I like to do it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to show you guys every single scouting assignment. That might be really boring to watch on YouTube. I just show you the end. I don't know. You guys can tell me if you like seeing that. Um, but that's that's the way we're going to do it. So 3 and 12, uh, clearly we're doing pretty well. You look at our our offense, 3, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. So we have some work to do, man. We have some work to do. Scouting here, it looks like we did 35, which is kind of what I'm looking for for the international. And then here we did grab 3. So let's go see who we actually grabbed here, recently scouted. George Gonzalez, non-ranked to 57. So... That potentially could he is 22 though, so eh, but it's all right. Uh Greg Fortenberry. Yes, sir. non rank to non rank potential is pretty high, so maybe. And Jim Plaza 22 as well. So 
What I like to do is I like to scout these guys, the guys that I discover because you never know. Guys like these, I probably won't scout. 22 years old, probably wasting my time. But Greg Fortenberry, a left fielder with potential high 99. Again, it's not scouted. I know it's not accurate, but I tend to have decent luck. I'm sure you guys do too on kind of blind blind drafting or blind scouting these uh, these guys that start with high potential with no scouts. Obviously, it's not a perfect science, but I tend to do pretty well. And this is how you get some some gems here. It doesn't always work, but so Greg Fortenberry is probably somebody that we're going to scout. So I only discover once. Again, it's just the way that I do it. I'm sure you guys have a lot of other ways you guys do it. Uh, but but we're going to keep scouting international until we're done there. And then we'll probably switch that to central or probably east. I'll probably take a peek and see who has more. And then for, pro, uh, uh, for these two here, these are our position player guys. So we're going to focus on first base and outfield. So we're going to scout a lot of that. Um, and this is where we start individually scouting. So I like to go to the major league rank to start. And I have pick 15. So I'm not going to touch any of these dudes here. I'm not going to get them. They're not going to be here. The pitchers maybe, maybe will be here. Uh, but some of these guys I'm going to scout anyways if they end up being East or Central, whichever one I do. Um, so I might do some of these anyways. I Being pick 15, I will probably, let's see, reliever. I probably will, I don't need, see, I, I don't need these second basemen though. So I'll probably skip here to closer. I mean, a closer would be nice, but. Fuentes can probably play other positions. So I'll probably start with Fuentes and start working my way through. I, I'm very position player heavy is what I'm looking for. Um, it looks like this is a very pitcher heavy draft as well. So I might have to look for some stuff. Don't want shortstop right now. I can always come back and look. We'll do Liam Hodge and then Spanos. Uh, we move this to third because I'd rather have these guys with the higher interest. Um, so this is what I typically do. Again, if you guys have other ways, please tell me how you guys scout. Um, maybe I can learn some stuff. I'm definitely not stubborn in that way. Uh, we go to scouting here. Now, here is kind of the way that uh, where I do certain things. Uh, Liam Hodge here improved 10 spots. Ugh. He is a complete fielding and defense dude. He can't really hit. He can't really hit. I probably should not scout this guy anymore because of the way it's going. However, I've seen this stuff happen before where I scout half, then I scout the other half, and all of a sudden his hitting attributes jump through the roof. So because he went higher on the draft board, I will probably continue. This is the guy that I probably won't. Um, typically when they drop 25, I don't like to touch them. However, Considering that his he's not full ninety nine defense and speed, and it's this guy could be a decent leadoff hitter. I'm hoping that his contact will stay high. Um, you'll see a lot of these center fielders with well above average speed and, and fielding, and all their hitting stats go yellow. Those are the guys to avoid, unless that's what you want. That's cool too. For me, and this is not what I'm looking for. Um, so. I will probably finish out both of these guys. Um, again, some of you probably you're screaming at your phone right now, telling me you're an idiot. Don't do that. Um, but I've, I've had a couple practice and last year, of course, to where sometimes this works out. So Liam Hodge, um, it, it didn't improve enough. So that was kind of a waste, but Fuentes, you look at that, he might be a decent leadoff hitter. Um, his contact stayed high enough to where it might be manageable. The vision discipline, again, stayed manageable. The problem with him is his potential kind of dipped a little bit. Um, so that's not ideal. Um, both of these guys kind of didn't work. I took a shot, and I, none of them looked solid enough to take it 15. We'll see. Th things can change. Um but I'm not a fan of what I saw so far. So we'll go Robert Spanos. Again, we're still looking at, honestly, I probably should just go here and do this differently. We'll go to the outfield first. Brooke Voigt is the next one that we'll grab. I think it's week six or seven to where we can switch the scout position for pitchers. So we'll do that. 
We're already into May. Again, we're doing really solid right now at 10 and 23. Oh my gosh. 20 to 9? Okay. Josh Rojas, four hits. Julio, four RBIs. Garver Joven, five. Hanager, four. Dylan Moore, four. Okay, and we hit five bombs in a day. All right, that's a good game. That's a good game. Uh, get fucked, Braves. Okay. Um, ooh. So, Brooke Voigt, we will not continue with him. He dropped 50 spots. Don't trust that he's only going to get worse. Don't like him. Spanos, I think, held enough um, for us to take a chance on him. So, Brooke Voigt will change. I just don't like putting the risk on people like that. Um, Leo Delgado, again, typically I don't, I like to go for the higher overalls first, but we're very outfield needy right now. But you know what? Before I do this, I need to double check. Where are we at here? Pitchers, so two more weeks, I believe. Okay. So I'll make sure I didn't mess anything up and I'm losing my weeks in my head. All right, we won five of seven that week. That's good. Two straight shutouts here, Wu and Castillo. Very, very promising for our young pitchers. Robert Spanos jumps up to eighth overall. That's pretty huge. Potential is only 77 and 93, but I like that he jumped up. He's quick. The problem is he's not that good of a defender, which is very brutal for the outfield. But the dude can probably hit. He's hit. He can hit most likely. Unless you just get completely hosed. He's fast, but he can't play defense. Interesting, interesting guy. Delgado drops a ton. Um, this is somebody that is what they call the fog of war. Obviously, if he was 100%, this would make more sense. But you look at those attributes, you're like, oh my God, this guy's amazing, right? Look at the contact, look at the vision, discipline, look at the fielding and speed. But then you look at his potential and overall on the top. This is somebody that if you draft, he, it's going to be those fog of war situations where you're going to be wrong. He is not going to be this good. The attributes are fake. The potential is what's going to be there. And he's going to be one of those 72, 71 overall players. That's going to be his overall. That's going to be his potential. And he's going to be a bust. So we're not going to look at him, but we will continue going. Not recently scouted. We'll go into right field. Again, we just need to find somebody that we can draft with this. Man, we just do not have a lot of outfielders in this draft, huh? Because we didn't uh, we didn't discover enough, which is a problem. Which is a little bit of a problem, but it's something we're going to have to endure here. Um, Ruben De La Rosa. I mean, we'll see what he ends up as. Orlando Segura. Kind of the same situation. It depends on what he goes up or what he finishes as. I'm not a huge fan of either of these guys, but simply because I need outfielders, I need to continue to check. We still have first baseman to do too. Now the problem is we're not recruiting a lot of people. I know there's a lot of you who only scout 50% and then switch immediately. Um, I know that in the end, I'm not going to be able to scout a lot of people. Again, my scouting strategy is a little different than others. Um, but it's just kind of the way I do it. This guy is not, not good enough for 15, but he would be decent to get in the second round. Maybe Segura jumped up, which is great. Might just be because of his speed, but again, someone that could be serviceable. If the higher end potential hits, he did jump 31 spots on the draft board. So it's a, maybe, uh, we are done here. I'm pretty certain we are done here. Ooh, Bern Bernard Fernandez. 39, 8 to 1. Okay. Uh, so we will skip him and we will go to East. In theory, I should probably look and see where the players are, East or Central. I'm just going to do East, though. I'm going to be lazy right now. It is what it is. It is what it is. Um, Holy center field, man. Uh, Actually, you know what? There's probably more if I do it this way. See, Paul, nah, he's 22. Man. Man. Fabio Guillen, that's probably somebody we'll do real quick. Again, I like looking at the 99s. I think it just, oh, there's that Fort Berry. Oh, I almost forgot. Oh, baby. I still need to do first baseman too. I need to not forget. 
Austin Voth for two or three months. That's bullpen in my minors. So not ranked and not rank, but oh, gross. Gross. His potential stayed high, but whole, holy gross. Um, and Fabio Guillen definitely stayed where he was as well. Catcher secondary. Interesting. Interesting. Probably not enough to keep him, though. Now we definitely need to go to first base here. Um, gosh, I just don't like those 22-year-olds. Brian Corona. Uh, I mean, I think I have to. I need I need someone to be... Oh, 17? Okay, we're going to change this real quick and see if Central is better. Again, I could fix all that just by looking, but uh, your boy's lazy. But we can't make a trade. Um, this is not one. This is not one that we would trade anyway. We definitely don't need pitching, and we're not going to trade away JP. Uh, back to scouting here. Corona. Again, this is another one of those fog of wars here. He is he is not this good. If you look at the top left potential and overall, you're not going to be this good with contact and power and vision and discipline, and be that potential and overall. It's just not a thing. And what I've what I've learned again, maybe maybe you guys have learned something different, but what I have learned is that the potential is the one that's that's right most of the, of the time. So if the potential is saying 72 to 82, that's what you look at, not the attributes. Again, could be wrong, but we're going to take a peek and write down the name and see if we were wrong. Um, but every time that I've drafted someone like this because their attributes look so good, they end up being garbage. A 73 overall and potential, and they're not 90s. So we'll probably skip out on him. Again, if we get screwed, if we get screwed. Um, Geronimo, we will take a peek at. Maybe he can be a, like a future DH. I don't really care about his defense, but especially at first base. But maybe I can keep going and scout him higher? And he can improve? I don't know. Maybe. Zach Clemente will be next. And 23 for Central, so that's better than East. So we'll keep that. 30, I don't care. We're still 27 days away from the draft. Geronimo, hey, you know what? Okay, maybe. Maybe. Could be a decent hitter. Again, it's depending on where that potential lies. His his max out is 87. That's probably because his defense is so garbage. Um, but if he can even halfway be that good of a contact hitter, the vision, the discipline, this guy's be on base machine with a little bit of power. So... I, I really like this guy here, maybe for the second round. I mean, we'll see what uh, 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 what falls to us at 15. But Geronimo here might not be a horrible pick at 15. Clemente. Um, he didn't improve. This is another situation. I will probably do him for another week. And then, all right, let's see what we need to do now. For Is there anybody else? I mean... I really don't want to do Marin because I feel like, you know what? Oh, whatever. Let's just do it. I need bullpen too. But, oh, Cade Marlowe. Bullpen is something that I feel like I can kind of guess with closers. Um, So, may, I mean, I probably should be scouting bullpen though. But, oh, Clemente. He jumped up to 44. That is very solid. Uh, that's his defense is not as bad as I thought. This guy, again, assuming that his potential hits and it's not the lower end, power hitting first baseman that can DH but can play first if we need him to. I like those power numbers. I'm a very power-driven guy. It's just the way I work. Marine, we know his potential is high here. This So this guy here, we know that his potential is going to be good. He's one of these older, late bloomer players. So, again, this might not be a terrible guy to get in the third round, maybe. Draft rank 71. He dropped the 106, which is odd. But you look at the potential, 
This is going to, and for anybody that's played franchise, you know what these guys are. They're the 22 year old guys who are probably going to be in right in the middle of their potential. He's going to be at 85, 86. He's going to be a low, lower overall. So he's going to be in the minors for three or four years. But remember, they have those late bloomers. Everyone who play, who's played franchise for many years are used to people at 31 starting to regress. Well, the past couple of years, they've had these late bloomer players who will play until they're 36, 37 and not regress yet. So hoping that Alonzo is one of those late bloomers. He comes up to the majors at 26 and he can still play for 10 years. And those attributes are pretty damn good. A power hitting first baseman, that's probably better than the other guy. Um, so we might have to wait and decide, do we want Clemente, Marine, or both? So it's nice to have options, which is very, very good. Um, change prospect here. Where are we at for pitchers? 50%, so we'll probably sit. Oh, okay. So both these guys are done. Um, now we kind of just, what do we look at here now? Are we still looking at some outfielders? Do we still have potential? Freddie Pearson, I want to look at. Are there any other? Willie Freitas will probably be another one of those situations. I don't want to wait four years, though. I need some outfielders now. Um, you know, if we draft 18 year olds, we're still in the same boat where we have to wait. Um, I like the Segura jumped up. Ruben De La Rosa might be there. Let's go back to left fielder to see if there's anybody. Paul Christian, I would probably guarantee you be another one of those guys who will be very good, but a late bloomer. We might grab him just to scout him real quick because he only takes a week. Um, which we will do just because we can finish him real quickly. Real quick, like. Uh, we have improved. We were pretty terrible. And we're... Oh, Almost back to 500. We're not, but almost 41 to 44. I will take it. Uh, for Freddie Pearson, kind of hung tight, not terrible, but not great. And just as we suspected, Paul Christian is exactly like we thought. He is one of those high potential late bloomer players. Um, not terrible to have in your system, especially for the first year draft, getting some players. He's decently fast, he's not very good defensively, but the he can he can hit a little bit um but if he can you know again the attributes could be wrong too guys they could be a bunch of well above average and be wrong and these could be yellow and could also be wrong the other way if he's potential 90 these stats are not 90 so he could be better than his attributes too so that's another kind of late guy that we can maybe pick and hope that he's a late bloomer um and i believe we're on our last week here of scouting before we get into our draft, um, we didn't really scout any relievers, which is kind of insane. Um, it, I mean, I mean, we, we really need bullpen too, to be honest. I really wanted to focus on starting pitching, outfield and first base in this draft, and then we might focus on bullpen later, like in next year's draft. But it depends on who's going to fall to us. Um. First base, Marcus Spanos. Let's look at him real quick just because, again, I, I like looking at the 99s because I just think they're really fun to hit and they, they have a high chance of hitting. Especially for catchers, by the way. If you want to guess on a catcher, which the way, the way that we drafted, we're going to have to guess on some players. We're not going to have people fully scouted. We're going to have to guess on some high potential guys that are not scouted and hope we get lucky. That's just the way it's got to be. It, it's the way it's going to happen. Um, we really don't have any other options here. I'm trying to flush for some high blues and see if I can get anything. Uh, the pitcher I don't really want to touch. We have enough pitching to look uh, to draft from. I mean, and it might just go a pitcher with the 15th pick. Depending on who's there, there's a good chance that we'll be able to get a really good pitcher. Ryan 
Unger, 22 years old, probably another one of these late bloomer types. Joaquin Chavez is definitely someone that you could, uh, even though we don't need a catcher, we have Harry Ford coming up. It'd be nice if we can hit on something else. Dave Russ, if he wasn't 21, I might look at him. Third baseman, 21, good Lord. Alex Ortiz, we don't need a second baseman. Just trying to find someone else to scout real quick at the end. Again, I'm sure you guys do this differently. This is just the way that I do it. Let's go Marco Santo here just for shits and giggles. Is this the guy that can scout both? Pitcher 77, it's not perfect, but I will take it. So, actually, I don't. Now we're going to cancel this. This is the guy that is going to go scout my pitcher that I wanted to look at. Rel oops. Reliever. I forgot where he was, too. I'll find him real quick. Ooh, or Ichiro Hayashi. Yeah, we're doing him instead. It's Ishiro, baby. It's Ishiro. First base, uh, we'll go back and grab the guy that we were at, Marco Spanos. We'll move this guy back down to third. And this is what, what we'll do here. This is the way we'll end. Uh, Samon Taylor, that's our triple-A guy. It's okay. I guess double-A. Locklear, and we got for a day or two. Oh, so I guess we have one more week. Just kidding. Um, doesn't look like much or, oh, I like that he can play infield and outfield. Interesting. And he's decently quick. Interesting. And Ichiro Hayashi, not crazy about him, but we will probably keep him just because it's the last week. Uh, view prospect list. Are we done here? Nope. 80%. So one more week here, and a lot of these guys will be done as well, which is super great. 33 to 4, I like it. 3 to 1, so that guy stayed high. Okay. So we'll probably just keep this here. Um, one more week doesn't really do much. Although, you know what? Let's actually go back and change this. Let's go all. And let's see if we can find another high potential late bloomer and maybe we can start off our franchise that way i like drafting 18 year olds 19 year olds um but if we can just get decent players to at least start the build then i think that's fine too so some of these 21 and 22 year old late bloomer guys that i kind of passed on like and De silva i don't trust drafting center uh, scouting center fielders which sucks because i feel like they're all speed and defense I don't like it. I don't like it. Unger, it's another guy. Ken Santos, I already scouted. Logan Ryan, looking for the high blue. Like, I'll do Dave Russ here, a 96. Oh, we'll see what's up. We can scout him full. So we'll scout him here. And we, we will go here into here, into here. So the very next day, assign draft picks in one day. What are you talking? Oh, okay. Never mind. Good Lord. Um, so once we sim this one here, that's when we will go into the draft. So that's going to be for the next episode. So what we'll do right now, 49 and 48, we'll go take a quick peek on how we are doing here. So we'll go into our lineup. JP, 267, 14 bombs. Julio's pretty well, 16 of 52. Jorge Polanco. Hey, 16 bombs for Jorge in the first half-ish. I'll take it. 22 from Garver. I'll take that as well. 272. Great first half from Mitch Garver. Uh, Cal Raleigh, not as good, so that's unfortunate. Ty France having a pretty poor first half. Luke Rayley, not bad for me, kind of just throwing him in. Mitch Hanniger and Josh Rojas. Canzone here is not playing well. Not a lot of at bat. Same thing with uh, Zebby Zavala. Dylan Moore. Jameson Cumbest, my cap. Already improving very quickly. We're halfway through the first season. 
goodness. Jumping up two on everything. And he's hitting 297 and 20 in 27 at bats. He does have his first two major league home runs. Fister Furbush, pretty much the same thing. He is improving pretty rapidly. He's already up two overall in the first half of the season. He has 256. He also has his first two home runs, and he's driven in six. So a very, very good start for my caps. For everybody else's cap, remember that we will look at yours at the end of the season. We look at our pitching rotation here. Um, Castillo doing okay. Kirby could be better. Gilbert's having a decent year. And Miller and Wu. So pitching is doing what pitching should do. Obviously, a lot of these numbers could be better, but only one starter above four. Hey, I will take that all day long. And even our bullpen. Holy Lord, our pitching. Gabe Spire, 21 innings, lights out. Mooney, 33 innings, lights out. Goodness, our pitching is holding us down just like it should be in real baseball, but it's failing us right now. The A's are 26 and 70. Uh, gross. We look at the top prospects here. Nothing has really changed. Again, you'll know where your prospect was in episode one. But this is what we're looking at. Still Robert Jones. And you could look at the level two, which is crazy. Look at what the Brewers kept Robert Jones, the starting pitcher, in single A. Some of these guys are in single A. Some of these guys are not, which are absolutely bonkers to me. Hugh Cox is in single A as a 73 overall. But it doesn't really matter because they're getting better. We leave it to the AI. Some of you guys are up in the majors. Some of you guys are not. Hart and Russell are not. Uh, Taruno Fuji is is up in the major leagues, as is um, really not a lot of others, to be honest with you. That's very surprising to me. Some of these guys are in single A. Blake Mitchell's a real player, so that doesn't count. Bianchi is up. And yeah, wow, okay. Um, some of these guys could have also graduated as well already because we're almost halfway through the season. So if you don't see your name on this list, you might have already graduated, which means you're in the major leagues. So that's gonna be this episode, guys. First half, we kind of took a peek. We did our scouting. The draft will be next. Again, guys, if you have tips and tricks or things that you do that you draft, please toss it in the comment. I'm not stubborn. I like to learn as long as it's not a cheese strategy. Um, which I'm not fans of. I like to be somewhat as realistic as possible. And I think there's a difference between strategy and trying to cheese the game. So if you have ideas and things that you do on how you scout, please let me know. I'd love to hear it. And outside of that, hit that like, hit that uh, subscribe button, turn on the notifications, drop me a comment. I appreciate you guys. And again, if you want to add your cap into this franchise, all you have to do, fill out the Google form in the description complete the form and your cap will be in for the next spring training. That's all you have to do. And then you can watch them go into Cooperstown. I appreciate y'all have a wonderful rest of your day.